we are going to be uh, giving some thought today about learning to love group projects. And I know that the term love in the same sentence with group projects may seem a little bit strange, but, uh, but we're going to work our way that way. Although I have to tell you, that it is going to uh, that is that it will be taking we will be working at this uh, for a bit. Uh, three of us have put our heads together for this, but we also will be um, doing at least two other sessions where we'll take the topic in further depth. We will go deeper into it. Um, so uh, myself, Mary Rotundo, did did a lot of the research on this, but we are delighted to have uh, to have input from Janice Servany. Janice is in College of Business and has developed some really really effective uh, group process, team process skills with hers, and so she's going to be actually with us in a session. Uh, later on uh, at, at some point uh, during the summer. So we're, we are delighted to have that happen. So this is indeed a collaborative effort. This is the first of what will probably be three sessions. And we're gonna think about faculty issues, what our concerns are as faculty when we um, are thinking about putting that all important group project in. We will also be talking about the student issues and and we typically get very similar responses when the subject of a group process project or a team project comes up. So we will also be thinking about the uh, the positive outcomes that we want to that we want to generate in the uh, in the group process or the team process. Um, this is a, a, a slide from Janice Servany, why we often hate group projects. And, and I'm, I will, let me, let me uh, take us out to our, um, to our poll page and see what we have up there. Um, so now I am going to move this so that I can display this for you. Um, now I need to move it again so you can see where you are. Um, so some of the challenges that come to mind when we're thinking about group and team activities, the engagement piece, and I'm assuming that that means uh, not everyone is engaged at the same level, that, that there are often conflicts. And we have, we have a few tools to share today to help with some of that, but we will certainly have a lot more in our next two sessions. Um, equitable, making sure that it is equitable for everyone in, 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 within the group, the responsibilities, <laughs> laziness, um, well, yeah, perhaps, and and perhaps, gosh, we're really busy, right? <laughs> Unfair overall grades, and we have some comments about how to how to balance that out a little bit later. Facilitating the group projects is definitely one of the things that is a is a a challenge or can be a challenge. So I will invite you to uh, to continue posting on that. And um, we'll, we will come back to, uh, to this one, and then I will also uh, open up the next one in just a few minutes. So let me go back to where we were. And as I said, this is, um, this is from one of Janice Servany's uh, presentations. And uh, what's interesting is she literally starts the project out with a brainstorming session with the students. Why do you not like group projects? And, uh, and these are some of the things that, uh, that she's had students come up with. And we've all, we all recognize this. We've, we've 
dealt with it both as a student, as Ashley mentioned, but we have also dealt with it from a faculty perspective. And so we, we know and understand that there are challenges within that. So we will be taking a look at some of these challenges. And uh, Janice, thank you for joining us. And uh, and we appreciate whenever you need to speak up. And I will make I will mention this to everyone because I did not leave the WebEx slide in. But anyone who wishes to make a comment, please uh, raise your hand. Ashley is our hostess and moderator for today, and she will uh, unmute your mics or you can put a comment in the chat room and she will share it with us. So uh, I appreciate your um, willingness to join in and share some things. So uh, thank you. So, <laughs> all right, my, my uh, presentation had a little, little bit of wonkiness in the transition. So if everybody complains about group projects, why would we do it? Well, there are a number of reasons for that. For one thing, it eases the grading time, not the grading effort necessarily, but a little bit of the time because of the fact that you can go into one place and see everybody's contribution. But what's really important is that it is a, a really strong, robust, active learning piece. And it includes the component of peer review so that the students in the group are interacting with each other and, and sharing, sharing the responsibility both for making contributions to the group, but also for taking a look at, at what their, their colleagues are also bringing into it. And so there's layers of review. You would review it as you're going through the process, as, as would the students in the group, but it is also um, a way of, as the faculty member, reviewing. Any comments on this? Sorry for, the, for it not, uh, not showing up as well as it could. I have a comment, Judy. Uh huh. I also think um, we would do group work is because it gives us a chance to gain experience when it comes to collaborating and teamwork. Because when you go out into the real world, you're gonna have you know moments or times where you're gonna have to work with a team. Thank you, Ashley. You are absolutely right. And and we didn't. I didn't even prompt her before this, but yes. Um, that is indeed a huge, a huge primary purpose for it. There isn't anything that our students are going to do when they leave this protected, really, environment that doesn't involve collaborating with other people, just as Ashley mentioned. And she's already recognized that collaboration is a, a major piece in the workplace. So. It's low stakes right now, and it's a safe environment, and you have people there to guide you if you are willing to be open to that guidance, because the group work can make students uncomfortable. And why would we want to do that? Well, being uncomfortable gives them and us a, a cue into uh, what some of their gaps are, that their skill level, skill things that they need to uh, take a closer look at. That if I'm if I'm having difficulty communicating, and we're not always going to be in groups with our friends. So if I'm having difficulty communicating, I can. This is something that I need to develop, and this group project will give me the opportunity to do that. Uh, it also helps particularly in our uh, really multicultural environment, it also helps us develop some cultural competence because within every group, there's going to be a variety of people with a variety of backgrounds and they bring different things to the table. So it helps us learn how to work within that 
environment and to be uh, culturally aware of what's going on. Uh, time management skills is one of the huge pieces because some of us wait until the last minute to really, I, I personally tend to be deadline driven and not everybody in the group is. I'm, there are, will be those that, you know, if it was assigned this week, whether it's due next week or in three weeks, I want to get it and get it done, get it off my plate. So it gives us uh, time management skills and the ability to work with others who may not be willing to work at the same pace that we are. We just want to make sure that nobody is uh, one that's going to be really have to really have to get in there and get it done now. Uh, we also need to take a focus on on mediating um, the technology use because while um, most of our students are um, technologically very literate, they may not be quite as as technologically literate in the areas that we are having them focus on. So uh, so. Uh, thank you, Ashley, for leading us right into that. And so now I am going to give me a second so I can open up your second uh, your second poll in there. So how do you motivate your students? How do you provide that guidance for reluctant students? So I'm going to give you a minute to go into again. It's um, slido.com with the same code, the uh, CELPD2. And we will go take a look at what's uh, coming in there. Anonymous polls. Oh, interesting. That's it. That, that brings us to a really interesting uh, perspective. And so the link is uh is right there on the page slido.com celpd2 uh, so motivate students with grades and and yes of course that is uh that is in many cases their bottom line even though uh we would like to to affirm that they're also looking for the learning uh yeah motivate them with guidance provide them with with the support all the way through. And that's one of the things that we are um, going to be talking more about today and then more about as we go uh, in depth in our later sessions on group work. So giving them that guidance. Any other motivational tips and skills? And if one of these reminded you of something else that's set up so that you can post more than one. So I will leave that open. Social presence. Yeah. And learning is definitely a social event. And so being able to bring the best of a group of people together is, uh, is really a, a, a key point because and and we I will be getting into this in a little bit uh, a little bit more also so the social presence of it so I'm going to leave this one open and we'll come back to it and as I have done in the past at the end of the session I will be sharing with you all of the results in our polls we've got uh, we have another one coming up toward the end as well so please feel free to continue to post in here, slider.com, CELPD2. Are you feeling better about it, Ashley? <laughs> so, yeah. all right, great, thank you. So, so in our session today, we're going to take a look at some of the benefits that uh, team projects provide, both for uh, faculty as well as for students, because students in my mind always are the 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 bottom the bottom line the or the top line i guess really student learning and student success is our goal it's where we want to go we're going to uh, think about some of the tips that enhance the uh, cooperation and positive group dynamics and take a look at our role as as facilitators and think about some of those real life applications for group projects so here's what's uh, here, here's here's one approach, one way of thinking about it. 
group work is like the drum, the rhythm section in a song. And all of them together provide a really strong sense of where that song is going. But any if there's any one of them by itself, we have the feeling that there's something that there is <clears throat> something missing in it that um, a, a single drum can't accomplish for that whole song what the whole group, what the whole drum line can. Uh, each member contributes. And when they are all in sync, they, they go together to create that rhythm, the combination of many of them. Uh, so they're all in sync, and yet each one provides its own unique individual uh, component for it. And this, uh, this what's uh, uh, really is fascinating, and this is supported with research, <clears throat> is that rhythm is a response mechanism. So the drums respond to each other and tend to intuitively pick up what the others are doing. This is the whole concept of positive interdependence, uh, which is a component of cooperative learning. So when we are learning in a group, each member of the group responds to the thought process and the contributions of the others so that they all go together to create uh, a whole that is generally greater than the sum of the individual parts. Uh, so each, each, both in the drum line as well as in a as in a group project, each one contributes and and adds to the competence and the performance of the others. So it's a it's a balancing, it's a counterbalancing counterbalancing piece of it that whole uh, that whole idea of positive um, interdependence and it is possible to build some of this into it we'll talk a little bit about that today but more about it as we go into uh, some of the the uh, later sessions on on the group work so as the faculty member giving them that support and guidance that scaffolding it's important to be really clear and specific about the goals of the, the the tasks that need to be accomplished and the ultimate final goal. Uh, set clear expectations for them and uh, make sure that you have built in places for the accountability for each person. And I've got a note down here that says team charter. That's an that's my note to self to uh, to show you what we use within our uh, e-certification workshops. Uh, there it is. Now let me um, share that with you. That's not the one I wanted to share and neither is that. All right, bear with me just a moment. Yay, okay. <laughs> I was able to make it work. So this is um, this is the team charter that we post in the e-certification workshop. And I know Janice has a couple of variations on this, which uh, she will be sharing with us uh, in a later session. So by having the members of the of the team, the learning team, commit to sign an agreement and and when we create the group project uh, this is the first thing that has to be submitted is the, the the team charter so it it goes into their personal information and how they uh how they intend to communicate with each other this particular one has uh, a skill inventory that where each one can identify what their strengths are and what they can contribute and what they can bring to the bring to the table. Uh, it has a place for each to put in um, to put the, the the goals of the team. It may be the the project assignment, but it could also include group processing goals. It could improve. Uh, it could include other types of things that we want to accomplish as a team. Um, one of the courses that I, I use group projects in have different 
uh, things that they need to accomplish throughout the semester. <clears throat> so it's it may be that at this point we're doing research and creating a presentation, but then later in the semester we are adding and we're contributing to each other's uh, as they develop their pro their individual project. And this particular charter has included in it the potential barriers. Sorry about that. The potential barriers to accomplishing the goals, and uh, and and so then, as long as we have identified right at the outset that there may be barriers, usually it's uh, a time commitment, particularly where we're talking about online classes. It's figuring out a way to either connect virtually in a in a in a synchronous manner. Or if we are doing it entirely asynchronously, uh, then our documents, the things that we're working on need to be someplace where we all have access to them and we can all make the changes and see the changes as it goes along. This particular one has places to set the ground rules, when we're gonna uh, set up our meeting times, uh, and I know Janice has some some really effective tools for making sure that those meeting times are productive. So ground rules are scheduled, the locations, what their expectations are, the agendas, all of the things that go together to make the this uh, an effective project that has everybody taking part in it. Um, this one has, let me move this out of your way again, uh, what potential conflicts might come up uh, between team members during the course and how as a group you will decide to uh, to deal with those. And then uh, we have included down at the bottom a place for the faculty member to submit feedback. When they have submitted this, then the faculty member can say, these are some really effective points and have you considered this or or that so uh i will let ashley open the uh conversation and ask you to um make any comments about what you see in here how how this could how it could be improved certainly as always and and how this might uh contribute to uh, setting up some effective uh, student groups. Meanwhile, I will take us back to where we were. Ashley, I'm going to ask if you could summarize what she said, please. What are you talking about, Nicole? Yes. I was not able to hear what she was saying. I just knew that she was uh, had some I'm sure some excellent comments to make. Honestly, I was moderating. There's people having technical issues, so I'm helping them. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry about that. All but right. she, she did mention how um, she she knows that there's something like, like what she mentioned in the team charter, but she suggested something that'll be helpful as well to others. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So aligning to the purpose Oh, yes, definitely. The uh, purpose of the assignment as it links to their to career goals. That's that is an excellent, excellent comment. And yeah, having the group discuss um, the career application at how how this project is going to uh, address ours. And I know that when uh, that when Janice works with it, Hers is entirely focused on uh, on the job application, how it's going to connect to where you are going when you get out of here, and so uh, so that yeah, you're absolutely right. That will definitely increase the motivation and the students' willingness to put their part into it. Definitely, thank you, thank you. Um, and so. Going back to our our drum line and the, uh, the the rhythm section being the part of it, each individual one adds dimension to the whole component to the whole final part of it. Each one has a unique contribution, 
and 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 that that unique contribution is what goes together to make it a whole a whole part of it. Um, it changes what we had what we referred to as the the rhythm soup. How each one brings its own unique sound and its own unique part into it, um, and so one way of making sure that we build that into it is to include uh, within that, um, yes, there there is a final project for the uh, for the group process, but build in along the way some formative pieces, low stakes, certainly, low stakes items that that add, you know, that that encourage each person to bring their part in to the rest of it, to allow that for that um, individual uh, accomplishment of their of their their learning goals. And Abigail, the team charter helps students enter the dialogue of defining engagement parameters. Yes, indeed, it definitely does because it it allows and encourages and in, I my guess probably totally uh, makes sure that everyone has committed to being a part of this group. So uh, so yeah, the their engagement parameters and there's um, uh, there's a couple of tools that are used to for, so that each one, once they've determined what their part is in it, then they go out and bring that into the rest of it. They become the expert on that particular piece of the final project. And that's a that's a, a, a really valuable uh, addition, a valuable component to it. So while we are talking about the old, the, the individual drums, here we are thinking about your role, the faculty member's role in this. And the faculty member is the one that determines literally the heartbeat of the song. That the, the, the you're the bass drum. You are the one that keeps everything in sync, keeps everything moving, and keeps the time. As, uh, to to take it back to our musical uh, re reference, you as the bass drum are keeping that consistent time and keeping everyone in sync with where they're going. And of course, this means that you're involved when you set up groups in within canvas or whatever your lms is you have access to all of the groups and are, are able to step in to their discussions and to be able to um take part not necessarily take part to, but let them know that you are a a presence yeah um so the the uh being and and one of the recommendations is to be intentional about how you are setting the groups up. Sometimes this works, you know, sometimes you're able to get enough information from them. And again, uh, you could include something in that team charter. No, even before the, before you break them into groups, include a, an informational sheet, which I think Janice is going to be sharing with us in one of our sessions, an informational sheet so that you know what skills are bringing in so that you can then uh, set the groups up so that there's a variety of skills within each group. And as always, the whole idea of backwards planning. Know where the, know the end in sight and know that what you are building into that group process is going to lead them directly to accomplishing the objectives for it. That whole alignment piece, knowing that uh, once I know where I want you to go, I know what to build in so that you can be successful as you get there. Yes, and Abigail also mentioned the uh, that the the group identity for that uh, that social presence. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Yeah. So so you as as the faculty member setting this whole up are the one who sets sets the uh, sets the objective, sets the where they where we are headed. So when we are. Uh, 
marching uh, perhaps to the beat of a different drummer. I've got that quote in here later on. But um, we're doing more than mar simply marking the cadence, but we are also introducing, which the drum line does, introduces the changes in the songs, where we are pivoting, where we are changing. So uh, group dynamics can be messy, and we all acknowledge that. We all realize that. Ashley even pointed it out right at the beginning of this, that it's it, it's a it can be challenging, and we know that. We know that. But providing the scaffolding for them gives us that foundation and so that they know that what what's coming next is going to build on the the pieces that are that are in there so uh group dynamics it's a it's 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 an intriguing uh concept and one that uh done effectively is really really a powerful one it's a powerful learning experience for for everybody now then i need to go in and give you the next uh the next one. So here's my next question for you. Uh, are we doing a drum solo? Not today. We're going to incorporate uh, everyone's ideas and skills. So how do you incorporate real life skills with your groups? And so this is your next uh, your next Slido question. What you do to incorporate real life skills within your groups or what you can do as you're thinking about building a group project. And we will move into that. Again, you can... Um, add multiple multiple comments all right yep definitely including those deadlines and the deadlines for the various components as you're going along so that they uh they know that by a certain time they have to have their uh, references available, and then they have to use those references to create, uh, take a real world challenge. And that, uh, what a great one, because if you're developing, say, a, uh, a group that is gonna be comparable to a committee when they get out in the business world, and each one of them takes a different part in that uh, in that uh, in that committee that group work yeah definitely take uh, make it real for them make that that career application <laughs> take on various roles absolutely yeah yeah and criteria for completion of the project and criteria along the way do that that whole uh, formative assessment piece. Yes, there will be a final assessment, a summative one, but the formative assessment, little little steps as we go along the way to encourage both their efforts at group work as well as uh, getting them closer to the ultimate goal and so that they also have to take on the time management piece. <laughs> certain criteria to completing the project. Definitely, yep. The use of tools for idea generation, reaching and ensuring consensus and actual planning. Yes, definitely. And, and providing them with suggestions for the tools. Uh, Canvas includes a few uh, collaborative tools that are available to them when they are within their groups and you may need to incorporate some training in using those tools and and then uh demonstrate the whole planning process maybe maybe go through with them do a um, an activity that takes them through what happens in the planning process yeah ensuring consensus that's an interesting, interesting uh, 
component of it too that uh, that I think Janice is going to help us with rather than uh, going with just the um, the 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 number of going on one of them, but the actual a conversation about how how taking it this way will impact the final project as opposed to taking it that way. Excellent, excellent comments. Think on various roles. Yep, I love it. All right, this one will stay open. I encourage you to continue to add thoughts in there, incorporate those real life skills for them. Professionalism is always a piece of it. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, because that's again one of those career goals is is taking the part of the professional in the field and being professional about how we work with the groups we may not always be in groups of people that 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 think alike which is probably a good thing and then it would that would uh, cause some some challenges so we have to figure out how to, in a very professional way, incorporate the the communication between us. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yes, that cultural competence, being able to uh, work with people from a variety of backgrounds and 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 knowing that, what each one of us brings to the table is extremely valuable. I have always enjoyed getting the perspective of someone whose background is completely different than mine. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You've got coming up with some great, great ideas and points in here. Thank you. Keep adding to that and I will check in. And as I said, I will send you uh, these comments the, the this information at uh, when we finish with this uh, so I will take us back into our session so some excellent excellent uh, thoughts and ideas today <coughs> so we've had a, had some conversations about why it is we want to develop that Okay, maybe not love, but fondness, appreciation for, how's that? Is that a better term? <laughs> for learning and practicing those life skills, things that we are all going to have to use. We've taken a look at some of the principles of effective group work and cooperation and a look at how, how we are there to be the facilitator for them. And we're going to, uh, as I said, take a deeper dive into some of those uh, principles of effective group work as we go on. Uh, as with anything, we have a multiple, uh, multiple references for dealing with this. And I am going to uh, share with you that um, our next performances, in, in keeping again with our music perspective, uh, next week, we are taking a look at student accessibility services, and uh, I believe that we will be on location in their offices and having a, a conversation with, uh, with Stuart as he guides us through some of the tools and things that are available for our students. And then the following week, we have another um, library session on using mind maps to uh in in ways that we may not have may may not have thought about so that's our uh, that's our our lead in our way of uh inviting you and encouraging you to continue joining us i truly appreciate your input today and knowing that what we all, again, this has been a group effort today. What we all bring to the table is unique and special and contributes to a final project in this that is more than, certainly more than I bring individually. And, and by bringing all of you together today, I thank you. 
thank you for that. And uh, and so I will invite you to uh, join in in those those comments. Oh yes, thank you. That yeah, the the How People Learn book is is always one of my go tos. Thanks, Abigail. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Um, uh, in Davy, Stephanie, and Nicole, and I don't know if you have anyone else down there. George, thank you for joining. Linnell, Janice, I appreciate what you are bringing in to us. Thank you so much, and uh, and take care. And I will send this information out to you uh, later on this afternoon. Thank you so much.